Hi, um, so this is a lightning talk. I'll have to go fast. I'm gonna start my start my stopwatch right away, right now, and let's go for it. Hi, my name is Miguel. Um, I've been loving databases for quite a long time. It's good to be back in Seattle, reminding me of my times at DynamoDB right here in the city, ten, more than 10 years ago. Um, I've been building and using databases for quite a long time. Uh, lately at Dune Analytics, where we end up effectively hodgepodging and mixing and matching databases. Um, and this is one of those stories. So first, like what's, what's Dune? What are we talking about? So we're basically all about making the blockchain crypto data accessible. Um, we are a community data platform. So what people do is we, they crowdsource, they write SQL queries that uh, simply select from base tables that are the tables with the blockchain data that we ingest and put into a decently sized schema or a decent schema, decently designed schema. And then they build on top of each other. They can fork their own queries. They can create views. They can create higher abstractions. And then they create business dashboards on top of that. And this is all real, real time. As the data flows in and then new blocks get created, um, the, the dashboards can be easily updated. So like I said, um, all of these dashboards are powered by SQL. Like every single one of those images are simply visualization of a SQL query. Um, so to basically render all this stuff, we of course have like created our own architecture for it. But as we evolved and wanted to basically cover API use cases, we will see how, how that can like play a trick on you. So we had this problem where because of the queries and the results of the queries are for rendering dashboards and they are gonna be rendered on, dash on the browser, and there can be on a single dashboard like dozens and dozens of queries um, and query results and that data, we had a, a very basic like limit on the size of a query result. So which is we needed to support larger query results and that was a feature that was being asked by a user. But in reality, if you think about it, what API users are doing is that they'll need to paginate, they'll need to basically filter the data, slice and dice, maybe they wanna sample it, so you basically have to basically think, okay, how do we basically fix this with a more structured approach? And our challenge was our architecture. We were like, we basically have cached query results that were like a fixed size in JSON. All uh, the query engine is a slow, big beast called Trino. Um, we needed to basically query the query results in very low latency or low, low latency for this type of use cases. And it had to be like really, really inexpensive and fast. Of course, the solution is DuckDB. So um, this is what the end result looks like. What we do is we run DuckDB on our API servers, we load the query result onto DuckDB, and we simply query DuckDB, problem solved. We skip the complete beast of the query engine that has, that has ton, tens of thousands of CPUs, and we simply run it embedded on our API servers, which are like two or three. Um, what are the technical details? Well, um, we have to, we had a few bets going on, like we needed to load the data fast. We needed to handle like approximately a million tables on DuckDB, every single query result is a table. And we had to have a high hit rate to reuse these results. Um, the other thing is for high performance and for our use case, we needed to control the queries being run on DuckDB so that it would be high, highly performant. So we have our own API and we translate that to DuckDB SQL. We run this in Go, we go DuckDB, thank you. Um, and yeah, we then implemented an LRU cache for the results and we support JSON and then we migrated the query results to Parquet, which is like the, the decent thing to do. And that's pretty much it. Um, it's running in production for quite a few months now. Um, we have queries running in, half, in less than a millisecond. These are like, uh, like, this is really nice for API use cases or mobile apps and things like that. So all of bets kind of played up. Um, hit rate is high. We can load the query result even if it's an eight gigabytes uh, parquet file in like a decent amount of time. So this is really working out. The impact on the users is effectively they got their wishes granted, like they have the feature that they wanted. We have, we support much larger results. We've also improved Dune.com because we've rebuilt Dune.com backend to basically use DuckTB. Um, and we use sampling a lot because all these charts, we don't need 20 million rows to, to, put, to plot a line chart. We just need like 8,000 pixels. Um, and now every single query and on Dune is also a data API and can also can be queried cheaply, easily with low latency. Some gotchas. 
Um, I won't, I'm probably going to run out of time. Uh, yep, time's up. But yeah, we had to do, we had to measure some gotchas, but that's fine. We can talk later. Um, conclusion, thank you for DuckDB. This is amazing. The no global lock for the checkpointing, wall checkpointing would be nice. Besides that, thank you. Thank you. We have a very short two minute session for Q and A's. Any questions from Miguel? Yes. I think your last slide kind of brought this up, but it sounds like maybe JSON serialization is sort of an issue or cop, you know, copying the data is you guys look into doing just using arrow streaming to the uh, client. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the profiling, exactly our biggest cost is on uh, converting the data types onto Go and then JSON serializing it. Uh, we did uh, have a to-do list, eventually put it on, on, on Arrow, use the Arrow API if we need to do it. We don't need to do it yet. Uh, users are not complaining. Um, but yeah, well spotted. Cool, makes sense, thanks. Thank you, any other quick questions from Miguel? Okay, thanks again for the talk. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.